Let's talk about languages. The computing world is full of programming languages. There are so many out there. There are hundreds or probably thousands of programming languages. You have a lot of options. For beginning programmers, this can be really confusing. And programmers often ask me what languages I recommend. So today I thought I'd give you a few recommendations. So first off, I think you want multiple languages. What do you call a programmer that uses one language for everything? A programmer that only knows one language. So different languages have different advantages. They have different features that make them better or worse for certain kinds of projects. You don't want to be limited. You don't want to limit yourself to just one language. You want to gather a collection of languages. One way to think about this is to think about different types of languages. For example, imperative languages. Most languages you're going to use are imperative, but not all. Imperative basically are just languages that are sequences of statements. So an alternative to imperative languages are data flow languages. Uh, or functional languages. You also have declarative languages. We won't go into all the details. This video is going to be a whole class on, on languages and, and language theory. It's worth keeping an eye out for different types of languages and collecting different kinds. You want to collect over time a number of languages that then you can use when they make sense. I think you need an object-oriented programming language. These languages are component-based, so they tend to take, you tend to have data and code clumped together into classes and objects. Examples are Java, C++, Ruby. You need a scripting language. So scripting languages are things like Perl, Python, Ruby. You notice there's some overlap between these categories, but scripting languages are interpreted languages, so they don't, they don't usually run quite as fast as a compiled language like C. They're very high level and they're very good at, te at processing text, and they're usually good for automating routine tasks in the terminal. You need a functional language. The functional languages are probably the least popular category of language out there. You're not going to see a lot of professional developers using functional languages, but I still recommend that you have one. And the reason is, is that programming in a functional language changes the way that you think about code. So function languages, everything is a mathematical function and function evaluations. And that may be a little weird when we're used to thinking about statement-based, very uh, linear sequential logic. Functions, functional languages tend to be very recursive, and it's just a different way of thinking about the world. I highly recommend it. Even if you're never going to professionally use a functional language again, learning a language like Scheme or Haskell or OCaml, take a class or just pick one up on your own, but you want to learn a functional language. So far, I have avoided answering the question of which languages I prefer. Let me, so now let's dive into some specifics and talk about different languages and where their strengths and weaknesses lie. First on my list is C. C is a classic. It's ubiquitous. You can write C code for any hardware out there. There's a C compiler for just about any computing platform that you'll ever run into. So one advantage of C is that it produces very fast code. It's very fast. It's very low level. It tends to be very close to the hardware. Very much like it's it's almost it's like human readable assembly almost. It's very close to the hardware. This gives you a lot of control, a lot of power, and allows you to to optimize and tune your programs to really get the performance you want. The downside is that in C you're going to do a lot of programming. You're going to do a lot of things yourself. So you're, there are a lot of tasks that are not going to be automated for you unless you can find a library that already does it. This is like memory memory allocation. It's all going to be very explicit. You're not going to get garbage collection like you do in Java or Ruby. And, some, and sometimes this can be a pain. Sometimes, sometimes you're just like, ah, I don't want to do all this stuff. But anyway, the, the advantage of learning C as a programmer is that I think learning C also produces better programmers. It seems much easier for students who are proficient in C to make the transition into higher level languages like Java or Ruby or Python. That seems to be super easy. On the other hand, when I see students that have learned in Java or Ruby or Python, some of these higher level languages, making the transition to a lower level language like C is often a bit more painful. So for that reason, I definitely recommend doing some C programming. Become familiar with C, even if that doesn't end up being your favorite language. It just gives you perspective. It helps you understand how the computer really works. And so it's really valuable. My second recommendation is really two languages, and that's Ruby or Java. When you're picking your object-oriented language, these are my two recommendations. Both of them are fairly simple languages. They're both object-oriented. They both support the usual features you expect to find in an object-oriented language, like inheritance, polymorphism. They're both fairly portable, so code that you write on one machine is likely to just 
port and run over on another machine. I say usually because neither is perfect in this regard, but they're fairly portable. Java is the older of the two. It seems to be a little more established. So Java programs tend to run faster, but it's also fairly rigid and verbose. You're going to write a lot. And you can see this if you just look at, if you, if you just look at Hello World, which is the program everyone starts with on any new language, right? So Hello World in Java, there's a lot you have to write. And there's a lot of these things that for the beginning programmer, you're likely not going to understand. Things like public, static, void. What do all these things mean? Well, they're, they're meaningful and they're important, but initially you may you may have a hard time understanding them. But that said, there's a lot of Java code out there. And so it's a really useful language to learn because you're likely at some point to inherit some Java code. So understanding Java is, is not a bad thing. Ruby programs run a little bit slower than Java programs, but Ruby is also a lot more flexible and it's a lot more concise. So hello world in Ruby is one line of code. So Ruby tends to be less verbose and more flexible than Java. Uh, for example, in Ruby, you can just leave off the semicolons. You can even leave off the parentheses off of function calls as long as it doesn't make your code ambiguous. In Ruby, everything is an object. That includes integers and functions. So this allows you actually to bring in a more functional style of programming into Ruby than you can accomplish in Java. This is nice. The other thing I like about Ruby is that Ruby has a really energetic community. The programmer community, very helpful. They're super nice programmers. I, I really like working with Ruby developers. No language is perfect, but I really like Ruby. I like programming in Ruby. It's a great language. What about Python? I know everyone's thinking, ah, you've left out Python. Python's my favorite language. And Python, it's a great language. So Python is a lot like Ruby, but it's a little bit hackier. It's a solid scripting language, which is where it starts at, where it started out, but it wasn't an originally designed to be an object-oriented language. And so the object-oriented features f seem a little forced and like, like they're kind of bolted on after the fact. They're, they're not as clean. They're not as, they're not as nice to use. The other thing I don't like about Python is that Python uses white space to group code. So now some people love this. Some people think this is the greatest thing. No, no curly braces around your code to define when a function begins and ends. And that's great and all. But the problem that you run into is anytime you have a big code base that has a lot of people working on it, you tend to run into problems when people have different text editor settings. One person's using spaces, the other person's using tabs. If you're using Python, you really have to lock all these things down. Different editor settings can actually cause bugs that can be really annoying and hard for people to track down for a while. Still, Python is a widely used, solid language. It's increasing in popularity, so I recommend you learn it. So these are my go-to languages, and they're the languages that I recommend for students who are just getting started. I can already hear the complaints, though. I can hear people just getting, but you left out my favorite language. What about, so let's talk about a few languages. What about C++? So I'm not really a big fan of C++. C++ is basically an attempt to make an object-oriented programming language that has all the power and flexibility of C. And unfortunately, I don't think they did a very clean job about it because they're trying to, they're trying to make something that does two things really well, it's a rather complicated language that I think just tries to do too much. If, if a pro, when a programmer claims to be a C expert, I might believe them. If they claim to be a Java expert, I'd be like, yeah, they might be a Java expert. Anyone that claims to be a C++ expert is probably lying. And the reason is that C++ is just a real gnarly beast. You could probably become an expert at it, but in my opinion, C++ is a bit of a mess. It's complicated, particularly when you start getting into templates and and how templating works in C++, you tend to just get a lot of complexity. You tend to run into bugs that are, that are hard to track down, and particularly for students who don't fully understand how compilation works, what compilers are actually doing. And so I found that when I'm helping students with their with C++ programs, often they get into situations that they just can't get themselves out of. And it feels like black magic with really big, long, nasty error messages that are really hard to make heads or tails of. And so I, I don't recommend C++. The only place where I think C++ has an advantage is if you need an object-oriented programming language that's really fast, maybe you're making games or you're making a 3D rendering engine, something where you just really need that speed, you can't compromise on it, then C++ is worth looking into. But not because it's a great language or not because I think it's beautiful or it's just it's just fast. So what about Perl? Perl has been called the duct tape of the internet, and there's a good reason. Early on, Perl was the go-to scripting language for, for web programmers. It was basically the, the go-to language for quick and dirty hacks on the internet. And you'll still find little bits of Perl code tucked in nooks and crannies of, in servers all across the world. 
There's a lot of Perl code still out there. Perl has great library support. There's a big community of developers around it. It's a capable scripting language. I just think it's a bit ugly. Perl has a reputation for being hard to maintain. I've noticed even Perl code that I wrote myself, when I come back to, it's often hard to understand. Now that may be that I'm just not a great Perl programmer, but I there and there may be beautiful Perl code out there. I just haven't seen it. All Perl code I ever see looks a bit hacky and a bit of a mess. Ah, so Perl's not my favorite. What about C Sharp? I have no technical objections to C Sharp. My only objection is that it is a wholesale Java ripoff. Use C Sharp if you want. It's perfectly fine. It's basically identical to Java with very minor tweaks. But all things being equal, I just have a hard time recommending it. If you can, I recommend you use Java. So what about Visual Basic? So so Visual Basic deserves a little bit of praise because it was it was the first attempt to make Windows programming accessible to beginning programmers. So that's great. And, and really, there's a lot you can do with Visual Basic. The biggest concern with Visual Basic, though, is because Visual Basic tended to be used by beginners, it has a reputation for being a newbie language that's not really respectable. And so as a programmer, if you want to be respected, even though there's... Visual Basic is an okay language. You're not going to get a lot of respect as a Visual Basic programmer. So that, that may not be a really great reason. You may not like that reason, but that's one reason why I don't recommend it. It may cause people to not respect you as much as, as they ought to. What about Objective-C? Objective-C is a fine language. If you're making iOS apps, by all means, learn Objective-C. I just didn't include it in my list because it's more of a niche language and not quite as widely used as the others, not as general purpose. Okay, so finally, let me comment on a few additional languages. First, let's let's talk about there about new languages. So right now, on my list of new languages to learn are Go and Rust, and these are languages I've started to dabble with. They've got some cool new features. They're great. I just don't put them on my list for beginning programmers because I don't know what their future looks like, and I don't want to recommend that you put a lot of time into a language that may or may not really go anywhere. So new languages have an uphill battle because you're asking people to switch from the things they're already comfortable with. And so these so new languages like Go and Rust may be the future of computing or they may be something that just doesn't go anywhere. By all means, when you have four or five languages under your belt and you're looking for another language, these are great languages to learn because they open your eyes to different things and different possibilities and they may allow you to do things you've never been able to do before. But as a beginner, I don't recommend it as your first, second, or third language. So once more on functional languages, they're not on my list. I do recommend you pick up a functional language. I actually don't think it matters all that much which one you learn. I just think functional programming is important. Um, also, just as a shout out for Ruby, I mentioned before, but Ruby allows a lot of functional style programming. And so I actually find that when I need functional programming, I usually can just use Ruby, which I'm using for a lot of other things. So that's why functional languages are not specifically on my list. But if you need recommendations, I would look at Scheme, OCaml, or Haskell. So folks, that's all the time I have for today. I know that I may have left out your favorite language, or maybe I said some harsh things about your favorite language. Maybe I don't love your favorite language. For that, I'm sorry, I mean no disrespect. There are a lot of great languages out there. This is just my list, and these are just my thoughts and opinions about languages, and particularly opinions for beginning programmers. For more experienced programmers, use whatever language works best for you. The main thing I hope you take from this is a few recommendations and the fact that different languages have different strengths. And of course, the more languages you learn, the easier it will be to learn other languages. It's just like learning any foreign language. So what are you waiting for? Go out there and get yourself a good collection of languages so you can come to your own informed opinions. Until next time, I'll see you later. So what do you think? I hope that was useful. If you're enjoying these videos, if you find them useful, please consider subscribing to my channel. I post regularly. I try to post at least one a week. If there are more things you'd like to see that I haven't posted, more how-tos, more technical questions, please leave comments and questions. Please send me an email, uh, however you want to get a hold of me. Just let me know what you'd like me to make, and as I have time, I'll, I'll see what I can do.